Hey everyone, welcome back to the Homesteaders Classroom. Uh, it's been about two weeks since uh, I decided to start on my um, experiment on getting rid of aphids, but also since I decided to fertilize my mustard greens. So I thought it was time to look at the results. Uh, I'm gonna bring you through the garden and show you what I found and what I've learned, okay? So let's go. So we are here at our mustard greens and one, I must say that they are really looking great. Um, I think that fertilizer certainly did the trick with helping them uh, pop up a bit more. You can see there's been a lot of new growth in the beginning. Now they're a little, they need a little bit of water. They're a little, uh, little drained from the sun. It's, uh, they've been getting a lot more sun as the, as it's, um, becomes closer to spring. The sun keeps getting higher in the sky and, uh, they keep getting more sunlight. So they're really loving that additional sun. You can see, I also gave these guys back here fertilizer too and everything in this little box is doing well I can even actually harvest these mustard greens but yes they're looking a lot better uh, so fertilizer works definitely but we really need to know if any of these methods for preventing or combating aphid infestations worked which I can see one thing I don't think we've got it all worked. You see there's ants. When there's ants, there's aphids, since ants harvest from aphids to feed themselves. It means we still have aphids on these plants and we're gonna see how bad it is. So let's get down to it. This first one right here, as you can see, is the one with the little butterfly yellow stickies. Uh, now I ended up adding an additional one to the, this because the first one I placed kind of got really uh, dirty when I was putting it in the ground. So I went ahead and put two, but look at that. Look at all those dead bugs that this sticky has on it. I mean, I can definitely say that bugs like yellow and uh, this definitely works as a death trap for all sorts of bugs apparently. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a closer look and see though if we see any aphids. I believe those are aphids right there, at least that little guy in the middle. Yeah. We definitely have some aphids on here. A lot more um, winged bugs I'm noticing though, like some gnats and stuff, which honestly uh, I have been dealing with a little bit of gnats that seem to, for some reason like to be on greens uh, and that one at least is just covered with flying bugs. Let's take a look at this one back here. See if it has any better. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of wings. Even some ants. Oh my gosh, there's some ants on this one. That guy's just walking. You see that? He's walking the border. I guess ants even like it. Maybe he's attracted from all the dead bugs, but... Okay, on this side there is one little aphid that's got stuck on his back right there, if you can see him. So, I mean, it this definitely does attract bugs, that's for certain. And whether that be, <laughs> I'm sure some of those bugs that were on there, even though it didn't seem like there were a lot of aphids, uh, I'm sure some of them were bad. I can't identify them all because they rather look smushed, but I'm going to also look at the bottom of the leaf I can see that there are still some aphids on here, but honestly, it's looking a lot better than it did. And with this plant looking so healthy, I mean, you can see this is a leaf that didn't make it. This is what happens when you get overrun with bugs. You get overrun with disease. Uh, I mean, for this guy, not being getting as much sun as the other ones and being dosed with fertilizer, I mean, like, I'm actually seeing just, like, there they are. Okay, you can see the aphids down there. They're not covered completely to the top of the leaf like they were before. There are still some down at the base, mostly. But overall, I mean, okay, this leaf's probably a little bit more wilted. He's looking a little sadder, but he's also on the ground. Uh, any plants that are just directly touching the ground are more likely to get bugs all over them. That's just, that's just the case. But 
Honestly, this plant is not looking too bad, and I think it did a pretty good job of keeping some of those uh, pests away. Little seeds in there. <laughs> All right, so. Let's take a look at the next one. We've looked at the one with the butterflies. This is the banana one. This one I was very interested by to see what would happen. As you can see, the plant is looking a lot better than it did before. Um, again, I did add fertilizer though, so I wanna know how much of that is from fertilizer and how much of it is because there's not as many aphids. So we're gonna take a look at uh, What I did, if you remember, this is deadly, is I cut up bananas and I buried them a little bit in the soil, but I also went back and took just a large piece of banana skin uh, and put that straight underneath. The reason being is I kind of wanted to test both theories. I'd read that either you just put the banana skin on top of the seal, on top of the soil or you dig it in. And so I kind of wanted to try both methods. So let's see. This is some <laughs> dried out mummified banana peel. I mean, it's not very yellow anymore, so I don't know how much attracting bugs it's going to do, but Let's take a look at our leaves. Here, let me get a better ugh, angle. Okay. Sorry, close quarters. So we'll take a look at our leaves. Okay, I can immediately see that there's aphids right up on the corners of these leaves. And they kind of go all the way down. That's a nice, big, healthy one. Let's see about these. This one's a little bit more mushy. It doesn't feel as strong as this one does. This guy feels more wilted. And he does have aphids on him as well. Not so much on the base, though, like the other one. Let's check. Now, this one's not so much on the base either. It's more so on the leaves. I'm going to keep looking around. See a lot of them on the leaves. Uh, and again, not so much on the base. Like, there's a little bit. Okay. So this one wasn't immediately near a banana. And you can see this one's got a lot more damage on it. Or a lot more aphid activity. Let's check this on the other side. So I am seeing that it seems like there's more aphids on this one. I mean, it's a little bit less, but I mean, this, yeah, this one's got a good amount of them on it and this leaf is doing pretty bad. But we do still have a little bit of new plant growth right here. That's just a ball of pine cone. If you're wondering, there's still some new growth happening. It's not the best. This plant still looks like it has a bit of disease going on with the white spots and everything, but it's persevering. That's for certain. All right, next one. We have the, uh, the yellow cup. Now, I did use an egg carton at first to uh, put them in, because that's what I had, and then when I was digging, in my uh, pantry, I found out that I had uh, this tiny little cup. It's not as bright yellow as the other ones, but it's what I had on me, so I wanted to test it. I can definitely see that there's some bugs in there. If you're wondering what the white stuff is, remember I did put a little bit of soap in there. Um, I did take a picture of the egg carton too, so I'll add. I did find some bugs in that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this water out and see if there's any aphids stuck down. I mean, I definitely see some bugs. A lot of floaters. I'm seeing some winged ones, but not in particular aphids. Unless these are aphids that have developed wings and tried to fly away. I did find some aphids in the egg carton. I think those little black guys are aphids right there. I know it's kind of hard to, you know, I'm using my phone here. I'm doing the best I can. But those little black specks look like little aphids. So 
This did work. It caught a variety. There's some ants in there too. It caught a variety of bugs just like the yellow sticker did. And now, oh, there's someone right there. Yep, definitely got some aphids on there. Okay. So it seems that there are multiple bugs that are attracted to yellow. And now I can't identify all of those bugs. I don't know what they are, but I can definitely assume that it's more than aphids that would cause my plant trouble. Um, I didn't see any bees or anything like that in there. It looked like some sort of flies. And I've seen some black flies like on my lettuce and stuff that have been hampering it. So honestly, I'm not too peeved about that. All right. And then so our final one is this one right here, which this has been getting sprayed with neem oil. It has rained a lot. I mean, I'm sure y'all know the country went through this weird cold snap in which, uh, you know, we got a lot of snow. We had a little bit of snow over here, but it was mostly just rain. We got like the very tail end of it. It was cold, but it was cold rain, just not enough to freeze too much. So we're going to take a look at these leaves. And that is some interesting pattern. I mean, let me see if I can get better light real quick. Kind of have the sun behind me a little bit. As you can tell, it's a little bit in the afternoon. So this leaf is actually looking pretty darn gray. Do, are there even any bugs on this? I think I see like one in the corner. But it's it's hard to see. Now... This plant's getting the most sun out of them all. And like I said, it's been raining and with neem oil, you have to keep applying it. So honestly though, okay, there is a weird pattern on these leaves, but I don't think that's because of aphids. I'm not seeing aphids. I'm seeing what looks like sun damage, possibly. But not so much bug damage. And that could just be that they're getting... Maybe they got a little bit hurt from the frost combined with all the sun. I see very, very few aphids on here. I mean, and I know I, I use neem oil already. And I've already, like, preached about it and everything it being my favorite. But, like, okay. There's a little bit. But very little. Now, this guy does seem like he's getting too hot. He needs some water. His leaves are definitely more limp. I think he needs a good dose of water. Yeah, the soil's moist, but mustard greens are a winter crop, and we've been it's 70 degrees right now. Um, it's getting a little too hot in Georgia for it, but again, y'all, I'm super pleased with that. Now, I'm going to take a, a little bit look here at some of these cabbages. Because I did spray them with neem oil, too, because I noticed that the aphids were getting on them. And, I mean, look at that. Like, these are some nice-looking plants. I see a little bit of bug bite right there. And there's a teeny tiny, itty-bitty bit of activity. But, y'all, compared to how this was before I applied everything, in general, we're looking pretty darn good. So... We're going to get in a better viewing spot away from this stuff. Give me one second. Okay, again, I'm pretty happy with those results, and I found some of them to be rather interesting. Uh, so, starting off with those yellow stickies, they caught a lot of bugs uh, on them. I feel like it's more of a preventative thing, though, uh, because I did see that there were still aphids on the plant. Obviously, some of them didn't get attracted, and it seemed like more of them were kind of attracted to it in the form of winged variety of bugs. But I feel like if you had them in a like a singular pot where they really stood out, I think it'd be a great way for it to attract it. And I believe that's what they're marketed as too. Is you look at the picture online and you can see that they're sticking out of like a pot next to a tomato plant or whatever. 
Um, do I see them as being used for like multiple, like a, a huge garden, multiple plants usage? I don't really think so. Again, they seem to work great on things like gnats and flies and stuff, but I didn't see a lot of aphids. Maybe the winged aphid variety, if they, if your infestation just gets that bad, then yeah. Um, but I don't see it working in a large scale. If you have a couple pots, sure. Um, but as far as like keeping aphids away from your plants full time, I'm not certain that those are going to work the best. Okay, so for the next one, the whole bucket, uh, yellow bucket with uh, water and soap in it. Uh, again, that one worked really well. I saw a lot of winged ones. There were some aphids in it. There were even some aphids in the egg carton. So even if you don't have a yellow bucket that you can uh, fill up a yellow egg carton from the grocery store, you can buy one of those pretty easily. So it seemed to work. And I have, even when I was researching this method, I've seen like images of large fields where they have like a huge five gallon, 10 gallon bucket filled with water and they just plop it in the middle of the field. Maybe because it's so big and bright and yellow, it just ends up attracting so many things. And uh, I believe the reason why the bugs are attracted to you in the first place is because, you know, they, they kind of look like the inside of flowers, that yellow. And so they're like, oh, okay, food. Or maybe they just like yellow, I don't know, bright colors equal food to them, I guess. So, but yeah, they would just put these big buckets of water in the middle of their crop. Uh, and you would see like little, they just planted, um, not, well, kind of like seedlings in and they're letting them get bigger and, and they swear by it. That might be uh, effective. I don't have a large field to try that out in, but for those of you who do, maybe you want to give it a try because it did, it caught stuff. Uh, <laughs> bugs are dumb. Uh, the key though, is that you have to have the water all the way up to the brim. That way they don't just like land on it and then take a peek at it, realize it's not food and fly away. So you really have to keep that water level uh, full. And if you are doing it in a large field, especially in the summer, you're going to have to keep refilling that water over and over again because it's going to evaporate as time goes on. Uh, my little cup was shaded underneath the mustard greens. And then with all the rain, the rain did just refill it for me. And also it had less evaporation with how cold it's been and how little sun we've gotten here. But again, in summertime, that's a different case. Uh, so you have to be on top of it. But it did work really well. Uh, the neem oil, it definitely worked too. Uh, I had already tried it, so I knew it was going to work. But I hope you saw how effective it was and there being so little aphids on it. Uh, I was really happy that it worked that well. Uh, I don't know about what that stuff was on the leaves. I want to say that it's sun damage because I've never had a plant react to neem oil in a bad way. That was junior. Um, so I like neem oil's never done that to any of my plants before. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to observe it and maybe over the next couple of days, I'm going to see my mustard greens wilting because it's getting out of season for them, which is definitely a possibility. Who knows? But finally, the one I was the most interested about, and that is the bananas. Um, I didn't think it was going to work at all, honestly. Uh, and then I did see that out of all of the methods, the most aphids were on the banana plant. So it didn't work to some degree, I'll give you that. But there was one thing I was very shocked by. It seemed that aphids really like to be at the base of a plant. Uh, at least when I started, most of the a lot of aphids were at the base of the leaves. And there were no aphids on the base of that leaves. There were aphids on the base of the leaves of the um, yellow sticker one and on the one with the yellow cup. But for the banana one, they were gone. They did not want to be on the base of the leaves. They were all up on the top of the leaf instead, where it's definitely softer. Now, um, I could say, well, maybe it's because they, maybe the bottom has gotten harder and it's, uh, and they just don't like trying to suck out of a more hardened area. They prefer going up to the leafy green part, which that could be true. I don't know enough about aphids. I know that, uh, except that they're like, you know, they act as mosquitoes. But maybe they were giving up and being like, oh, I don't want to try fighting through this hard stuff when I can have the soft stuff instead. I'm not an aphid. I don't know. Uh, but the fact that it was 
they were on the base of the leaves on the other plants and it was getting the same amount of sun. I can only imagine it was growing at the same rate as the other guys. Uh, so yeah, maybe they really didn't like the smell of the banana and that could be a thing. Why they congregated more on the edges of the leaves instead of at the base of the plant where the banana was. But I will say it did not make the <laughs> aphids go away all the way. It just made them evacuate the base of the plant. Um, but like the, the, there's still some merit here. I, what I think it, it is what, uh, I used a Dole banana, okay? Um, I can't say what country it came from. It's just company Dole, and it was organic. Um, but who knows? This whole banana thing, maybe I used the wrong banana. Maybe it's a certain type of banana peel, and that fact got lost through the ages of passing through gardeners, you know? Um, because... I, like, again, I saw people doing videos swearing by this banana thing, but they did seem like they were in another country and not the United States. I don't know if they have dull bananas there. Maybe they have a different variety there that they use, or maybe their banana wasn't organic. The difference with organic and inorganic, obviously, is pesticide usage. Uh, if they had non-organic bananas, maybe the aphids were attracted to a yellow the yellow of the banana and when they tried to eat it they died because it still had pesticides on them um that could be a thing too or i will find or i'll say this the best uh preventage that preventing that you can do from a bug infestation whether it be aphids or anything else is to have healthy plants so maybe it's just a fact that cutting up those bananas real small putting them in the ground halfway in, halfway out. It decomposes. It provides a whole bunch of potassium to the plant, um, which is, you know, one of those key nutrients that plants use. And then the plant's able to grow stronger from the nutrients and able to fend off more. Bugs don't attack healthy plants. They attack unhealthy plants, which is why towards the, when we started this and my plants look bad, uh, I found that they were covered in aphids. It's like a never ending cycle there in which an unhealthy plant will attract bugs, which will make the plant more unhealthy, which will attract bugs, which will make the plant more unhealthy and eventually just dies unless you don't do anything about it. Uh, my mustard greens hadn't been getting enough light and they also um, were was in soil that was depleted. So I fixed those problems though. And uh, now you can, you saw that they are, are looking much healthier. They got the nutrients that they need. They're getting more sun. I mean, you can see them sunning in the back right now. Um, and they're just doing better in general. So maybe those bananas provided nutrients to that plant and that helped it too. I can't say for sure. I do think that it's an interesting theory. I will say that I'm not going to be using bananas in my garden from now on because I think the neem oil, which is also a natural way that doesn't cost a lot of money, ended up working better. And it has worked better for me. Um, I don't eat enough bananas personally to put under every single one of my plants. But instead of deciding, hey, I'm going to put bananas to make my plants healthier, you could put your bananas in a composting pile or in a vermiculture, uh, which is actually one, something I'm going to get started. I'll feed it to the worms instead and they'll produce great soil that'll keep my plants healthy because that's, again, the best preventing you can do is to just have healthy plants. And that's easier said than done, but there are some methods you can do to prevent that or, or to make that happen. Uh, whether it be really babying your seedlings and starting them inside at first and letting them get strong before you bring them to the outside pest or having a uh, up to the outside pest or having a better a garden where there's multiple varieties and it's more of an ecosystem that has multiple predators to fight off those pests as well as beneficial bugs to help your plants or other plants that work together you know we talked about that uh, when, in the first aphid video. Um, there's multiple ways that you can make your plants healthy. Uh, but in the case of what do I do when I have an aphid infestation already? Um, no, I'm not going to put bananas on it. <laughs> I'm not going to put the yellow cup, even though that 
that worked great for winged insects, and I'm not going to do the butterflies either, the yellow stickies, because uh, again, those seem to be more focused on winged insects. For me, I'm going to use the neem oil because it got rid of the bugs. It killed them. It stopped their reproductive cycle, which is what I wanted, and you saw that it was a healthier plant. Well, it does get more sun, yes, but it also had just the same amount of aphids on it if not more actually. No, it had more aphids on it because it was the bigger of the plants. Um, and they're gone now, except for maybe one or two. And that's because it's been raining and I haven't been able to keep spraying Nemo. So yeah, it is something that takes a bit of time if you have to apply it weekly. And if it rains then it washes it off, but it worked. And it really doesn't take that much time, uh, at least on a small scale. And if you do have a larger scale, there are uh, machines that you can use to make larger batches that if you really need to get it. Again, this is for if you have an infestation already. I think the best thing to do, though, is to try to be preventative and take uh, action to make it so that infestation doesn't happen. I find that with my closed system, though, it's going to be more prevalent than maybe in a large garden that has uh, more plant diversity and everything. This is this is my battle, so I recommend neem oil for it. So for all of y'all out there who are having troubles with aphids, I hope that maybe some of these methods you can take and turn into your own. Maybe you like the banana method, maybe you like the cup method or those little stickies, or maybe you like neem oil. Hopefully uh, you'll find something that you can use. Thank you for joining me for this lesson and I hope I see you for the next one.